Charlie just didn't make enough runs last night. Is that the sort of overarching point? Yeah, spot on. I think you know, winning the toss on a on a really good wicket, and then um, you know 150 probably just not enough. I think we'd probably look at about 180 there. Um, our innings just never really got going. Uh, we struggled in the first six, and then um, you know just just uh, didn't hit, hit enough boundaries to create momentum in the middle period. So uh, it was a tough old night for the batters. Yeah. What needs to change over the next couple of days? Yeah, I think we've got a bit of a change, a force change, you know, with a few guys, a sort of personnel change with a few guys leaving for Australia now and Trav coming back. So um, I think it's nice to have a few days off now. We can just rethink and uh, just sort of replot and plan. Um, you know, winning, we've had three good wins out of six and with a number of games still to come, uh, that's really encouraging. So um, a nice time just to reset, I think. Does that record three and three, does that just say inconsistency? Does it just wreak inconsistency and now you've got inconsistency of selection as well? I don't think it's we've been that inconsistent. Like we've had one real bad game out of you know out of six, which uh, was down in Perth, and you know the wicket was tough. But it, in general, I mean, we haven't been far off. There's been a lot of good things. Um, if we look at our top top five batters, everyone's got a 50. Uh, you know, we've got some guys hitting the ball beautifully at the moment. Um, so I think it's more about adding to what we're doing. Um, you know, there's been a few games where the bowlers been outstanding, and then one or two where they haven't been on it. So. I wouldn't say complete inconsistency, more just uh, maybe just putting it together more often. With the guys that are coming out, can you weather the storm going forward? Because there's some great players coming out of the side. Yeah, obviously that's that's the big question that everyone uh, you know wants to answer. But I think what's encouraging is we've we've added to our squad from last season. Um, you know, I still think that the role definition for players is important, and, and you know, amongst our group we chat well and people know their roles and. I think it's more about nailing that, um, you know, and then a great opportunity for, for a couple of guys coming in. So, Colin, Travis Head comes back for Friday night's game against the Stars. Out Carey, Siddle and Stanwake. I'm assuming Harry Nielsen comes in to take the keeper's role from Carey. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, you know, obviously Harry's the second keeper in the squad, um, so he'll come back, Travis will come back. Um, not quite sure, um, you know, we're going to sit in the next couple of days and sort of, like I said, reshuffle in terms of the batting lineup. Um, you know, but at, at the moment for me, it's, it's still a, a very same feel. You know, Ben Lachlan probably not far away from coming back. So, um, you know, it's still a very similar feel, um, you know, although a few more challenges. Was he just rested or was he sore, Lachlan? Um, you know, we always like to say rested, but, um, you know, he might be a little sore, um, but nothing major. And, you know, we see him playing still a major part in, in the rest of the tournament. So obviously Trav will take over the captaincy again now? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> Easy for me to say that, yeah. <laughs> um, Alex Kerr and Weatherall have been a great opening partnership. Obviously, Alex gone. What do you do at the top of the order? Who opens with Jake? Oh, it's an interesting question. I, I, to be honest, I don't write, uh, quite know um, at this moment. Like I say, it's nice to have a few days because we know we've, we've got a few reshuffles and a few decisions to make. But I'm pretty sure with Trav record, he'll slide back into three, like you say, and probably me move to four. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll need to discuss uh, who's going to open. Um, the, the issue with the running between Alex and, and Jake, Alex has been run out three times in the six games, um, and you've lost all of those matches. How much of an issue has that become between those two? Yeah, obviously it is what it is. You know, uh, being run out three times in six games not uh, not ideal when it's you know one, like you say one of our real successful players at the top of the order. So. You know, obviously, need that, you know, that needs to be sort of looked at and, uh, you know, a little discussion and sort that out because we, we really don't want that happening. But, you know, like I've said before, the two of them know each other so well and have played so much together that, um, you know, it is just unfortunate. Do you think Trav Head comes back in with a bit of a point to prove? I mean, he's like, well in the Test Series and he's been overlooked in the ODI, not quite 2020, but do you think he comes in and perhaps wants to make a bit of a statement in the T20 format? Yeah, I'm sure, and I think... Uh, you know, Trav's that type of character, you know, he's an all-in type of cricketer and he's, he's a great leader for us. So I think just to have him back and, you know, he'll be wanting to do well. He, he stayed in constant uh, contact, you know, the whole time he's been away, um, you know, sending us messages on the group. And he, so he'll want to come back and do well straight away. And it's, you know, it might be a nice pressure release. You know, I mean, he's been trying to spend long hours out in the middle with you know, balls turning up the rough and, and now all of a sudden he can come and, and play nice and freely. So, um, so looking forward to having him back. So, uh, Rashi? It's been I mean, a tough week for him, obviously. He looked a little bit agitated last night. How is he? Is he, is he okay? Yeah, he's really good. Uh, he's, to be honest, uh, I can't imagine what he's been through. And um, you know, he's uh, he's really competitive and he wants to do well. I think that's where sometimes his frustration comes through. Is when you know last night he probably didn't have enough runs on the board, and uh, you know he wants to he wants to get five wickets and win the game. So you know, I think uh, seeing him you know back bowling and, and on a real flat wicket 
producing some of the deliveries he did last night is, is really encouraging for us. How does he go being, I mean, in the, you sit back and watch it on TV, the commentators, all they talk about in when you guys are bowling is when do you bring on Rash, when can Rash come in and take wickets? How does he handle being the number one strike bowler in the team, but obviously also the world? How does he handle that pressure? Oh, he hands unbelievably well. Uh, I think that's for a young guy, the character that he shows, and the, like I said before, he's so intuitive. He sort of knows what to do and when. Um, I'll just wave to him in the outfield, and he, you just see a big smile on his face every time he gets the ball. Um, you know, I think it's obviously a lot of pressure for him. Uh, every time we give him the ball, we, we, you know, us and the fans and the commentators in the commentary box, expecting something special. But the amount of times he does produce that is uh, is quite ridiculous. And. Uh, you know, we certainly love playing with him, and you can see how the boys have got around him in the last couple of weeks. How about his batting? Do you consider his strike rate? I think he's placed 39 balls in the BBL with 78 runs or something. Is there a temptation to maybe put him to, to seven-ish? I know Valenti did well yesterday, but bring him up a little bit? I think there's definite chat around it, um, you know, how to use him smarter. He's, uh, in the year he's been away from us um, at the strikers, his batting's come on in leaps and bounds. So, um, he's very dangerous at the back end and um, you know, I think there's definitely a discussion we've been sort of chatting about it and maybe using him a bit smarter you know, when we get into the last five overs and that sort of thing because like you say he's, uh, he's become really dangerous and he hits, hits the ball cleaner than, than anyone in the world. Does the, um, the, the other tournaments that you've played in around the world, you've played a lot of 2020 cricket, so are they as long as this tournament and does the length of this tournament give you hope that yes you, you've still got time to hit that consistency or in terms of wins that you need? Yeah, most definitely. It's you know, it's it's probably just as long as uh, the T20 Blast in the UK, which is you know sort of my my main tournament in the year. Um, so you know, I know from playing that, you, it's about timing your run. Um, you know, I think if we can, like I say, if we can put it together in the next couple of weeks and start building towards that um, sort of that that back back period where it really becomes important. Um, you know, we we definitely have the time to do that, um, being a longer tournament. And the stars have been good. Obviously, they're changing their team as well. But how do you rate their side? Yeah, they've always been a dangerous side. I think they play, a, you know, a brand that's that's out there. And um, you know, in the last couple of weeks, they've probably been been at their best in the last while. So you know, it's it's going to be a big challenge for us. And um, you know, with our reshuffle, there'll be there'll be some fresh energy as well. And like I said, having Trav back will be uh, will be great in terms of leadership as well. So um, so looking forward to the battle.